Here we are in the Serengeti, Tanzania. Look at this prime example of the wild's majesty. This lion is looking at you, watching you. Here's an actor, also using his eyes. Although not quite as developed as a lion's, bloody hell, you can't see in the dark. How ridiculous. It is said that an actor's eyes are just as important. Let's take a look, see what I did there, at how an actor in the wild can use his eyes to become the king of performance. Hello, welcome to Organic Acting. The eyes are the windows to the soul. If that's the case, the eyes are perhaps the most important tool us actors can have in relaying emotion, attitude, intention and general reaction to our audience. There's a reason why some people wear sunglasses in public, and it's not just to keep the sun out of their eyes. Papa's got a brand new bag, it's a man's world. Yes, I've spoken before about active listening, but it bears a deeper appreciation and understanding. Imagine you've just been cast in a role, you get the script, and you see you have four pages where your character is present but doesn't say a damn thing. Shock. Horror. What do you do? Well, the truth is, your character has plenty to say in the scene, they just choose not to say it. Throughout those never-ending four pages, your character is listening, chewing it over, they're in a monologue running the whole time. Your eyes need to show this. What is their reaction to what's going on? The reaction to other characters and words spoken. This is one of the most challenging aspects of acting when you don't have words to hang on to. And seriously, what's the alternative? Look at this boring dipshit. Beep, boop, beep. Does not compute. Have no lines. Must wait for next line. Engaging sleep mode. The practical approach of using the eyes in performance is a little more interesting. Think about how you use your eyes in everyday interactions with other human beings. You use your eyes to communicate, to engage, to stimulate a response, to move the other person. It's automatic, isn't it? Subconscious, naturalistic. And here's the key. In acting, your use of the eyes must have the same purpose and be just as naturalistic. You gotta be naturalistic. You gotta be naturalistic as hell. As an actor, you can't shy away from eye contact with other performers. Your engagement, your use of eye contact, is a surefire way of allowing the imaginary life of the scene to grow and reach beyond that of mere words printed in a script. Furthermore, it allows the other actors to feed off your performance. That's why an over-the-shoulder shot or close-up is just as important for the actor off-camera to give a great performance with the person who is on-camera. Imagine if you were in a close-up and your acting partner was lost, distracted, unfocused or just not engaging you with their eyes. This would destroy whatever you were trying to give to the scene. In real life, we don't just stare at the person opposite. We look away, sometimes to grab inspiration, gather our thoughts, reinforce a point. The same with acting. You can look away from the other performers. Your job is to find the places in the script where looking away feels natural and is not forced. Be conscious of this the next time you speak to someone in real life, someone you feel completely at home and comfortable with. Analyze what you're doing how you're using your eyes. Break down the process so you can replicate and emulate those actions in the imaginary life of performance. My CPU is in role in that processor, a learning computer. If you're screen acting, try to repeat these breaks in eye contact in the same place every take. Then you're gonna make life so much easier for the editor who is piecing moments together from multiple takes and looking for as much continuity as possible. Good boy. And speaking of editors, you will be the editor's best friend if you can learn the simple fact that in screen acting, eye flashes motivate cuts. Think about a scene that takes place around a table. The editor has a mammoth task of not only following the action, but keeping the cuts to each performer as natural as possible. The editor has a unique job in that they want their work to, sometimes, go as unnoticed as possible. 
We want to watch the film rather than think about cuts, don't we? That's the truth, baby. If you're part of a scene with multiple characters, let's say around a table, you need to be engaged, following the action and flicking your eyes to the person who is talking. Even if you've got no dialogue, move your eyes from one character to the next and the next and the next. This technique is gold dust to an editor and that they can use your eye flashes as a quick reference to motivate a cut. It makes sense. The dialogue is shifting to the next character and zip. What a helpful actor you are. And bonus, using eye flashes in this way means that you can potentially be on screen even when you've got no lines. And no, don't try to hog the screen in this way. That's not what I'm saying. Keep it naturalistic. It just doesn't hurt to remind the audience that your character is still there. Look at those lines, those bags, those crow's feet. You don't need to look like this. Just five easy payments of five, nine, nine, nine to nine, and you can rid your face of life's tire track. What nonsense. We're talking about using your eyes in performance, but what about everything else around those eyes? Those lines, those bags are quintessentially you. Don't hide them. Imagine what would have happened if Betty Davis or even Bogart had decided they were ashamed of their unique flaws and tried to hide them from the camera. Your eyes, your skin and face as a whole tell a story. Let them tell that story. The eyes, although important as an emotional tool, can also help you in the world of screen technique. If you're acting in an over-the-shoulder shot, you should always use your off-camera eye, that's this one here, to look into your scene partner's on-camera eye, that's this one on this side. What this will do is naturally bring your face around to the camera, giving more of your lovely performance to the audience. If you were to do the reverse, a big part of your face is lost, and you're probably throwing away 50% of your hard work, and that's just silly, isn't it? So remember, that eye to that eye, and don't swap mid-performance or the camera will notice. Face brought round to the lens, Oscar nomination in the bag. Oh, wow! I learned a lot not just by experiencing and experimenting, but by learning from others. In the 80s, Michael Caine gave a film acting masterclass. I've linked it below, I recommend giving it a watch. One of the things he focuses on is the eyes and how blinking can completely change an actor's delivery. And if I keep blinking, it weakens me. But if I'm talking to you and I don't blink and I just keep going and I don't blink and I keep on going and I don't blink, you start to listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> so blinking can weaken the character's delivery. This can be used effectively. Look at Hugh Grant using this technique to show an unsure, bumbling character. Or on the other end of the scale, unblinking to show his strength and that he means what he says. Just be careful to use this sparingly. If you want my opinion, and I suppose you do, seeing as you're here, an actor who never blinks doesn't half get some tired eyes. Seriously though, have a look at some of Kane's performances. He hardly ever blinks, and sometimes his eyes look strained and watery. Just blink, man. You know you want to. Look at this. And this. And this. What do you notice? The spurned lover. The cheating boyfriend. The discovery that Bob has used the housekeeping money to buy a collection of suggestive underwear. You watch any soap opera or drama and at the end of the scene, especially the last scene of the episode, will have a cliffhanger moment. This is where the characters reveal or discover something and the audience are given a few beats to take that information in. The scene doesn't just end, it ticks over for a few more seconds. That's the cliffhanger moment. You actors out there need to be aware of this. If it's your close-up on the cliffhanger, you need to keep those eyes open 
connected, responsive, and engaged. A top tip for this, take a breath. A breath here will run through your body and energize those eyes and your last few moments of performance. The alternative is that you shut down, fold, and all your energy goes with it. The audience not only wants a huge OMG moment, but they want to experience that with their favorite characters. Stay with your audience. Ride that roller coaster. Eyes, windows to the soul, remember? If you enjoyed this, the best way you can help this channel is by sharing this video, liking it, and subscribing. The super thanks button below allows you to support me in creating fresh content. Oh, and check out these other videos here. I've been Chris, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.